Miserable weather wise when we first got here, but as we can see, the sun, <laughs> has, now, isn't it? The sun has now come That's out. Great. I'm gearing up for another big weekend on ITV. What can we expect? Tomorrow is as good a day as I can remember in terms of overall quality across the board for a very long time, really. I'm going to be here at Sandown, base behind you, Mark, in, in the parade ring there. And here was a terrific day's race. Not often you can say a four runner race is mm. just off the charts. I don't care what people say, they prefer to have eight runners, whatever. Nonsense. We've got four of the best two milers there are at the moment. You could probably say, nice, great field there, foot pad if he was fully fit. But apart from that, we've got a champion chase on a Saturday afternoon at Sandown. Fantastic. And forget all about Cheltenham Festival. This is about the Tingle Creek itself. We've got Lawler running in the Novices Chase, a couple of competitive racing. And then up at Aintree, we've got Beecher Chase, and we've got the Grand Sefton over the big fences. Um, it's just all in all a terrific day. It's going to be absolute non stop action on Saturday afternoon. I can't wait. So we'll begin with the, the Tingle Creek, uh, the feature at uh, Sandown here tomorrow afternoon. As you mentioned, four classy rivals, three of which going up against the champion chaser against Altiel. How do you see this one panning out? I've spoken to all four connections, just to your right there. I was doing some interviews today. All four are quite confident. I spoke to Andrew Brooks, who's the owner of St Calvados, who thinks they're up against it for obvious reasons, but he was very impressive. And a race where Footpack got all the headlines, but the winner was very impressive. So Royale will sit there stalking. The tactics are obvious. The front two will go off under So and St Calvados. Ruby will gauge the situation, but St Calvados has only got one way of going. Went too fast in the Queen Mother Champion Chase, so Gavin Sheehan under a little bit of pressure. And then Altior will probably be in third, and then Daryl Jake will be stalking on So Royal. What happens from there? Well, I think they'll jump the pond fence, and you might think that Altior is in a little bit of trouble. Daryl Jacob won't have moved probably on So Royal and then Altior will hit the afterburners up the hill. And the way these guys talk, Mick Fitzgerald, if you think of the horses he's known and sat on, and he talks about Altior as being the best he's ever seen. Mm. He's working like an absolute Rolls Royce, apparently. We saw what Bouvardaire did at Newcastle the other day. They talk as if Altior is working far better than him at home. So that gives you a perspective of just how good this horse is, how well this horse works at home. And uh, I don't think you can oppose Altior. I know he's, he's on his comeback and he's had the odd breathing issue and he's odds on tomorrow, but He's so good, I just couldn't oppose him. I really couldn't, but can't wait to see how it plays out. And we've seen Kalashnikov further boost his Arkle credentials. Got another one in there, Lawler in the Henry VIII Novices Chase. Uh, hopefully trying to keep up with the pace. Obviously, Mengli Khan's had a good debut over, over fences. Lawler a winner for you? Lawler, I thought Cheltenham was really impressive, actually. The, the quotes afterwards, when I read out the quotes, you know how to read the quotes from all the different firms. When one of them was 10 to 1, for the Arkle off the back of that performance, Luke Harvey nearly fell off the podium because he was absolutely blown away by Lawler that day. Very impressive. Um, you talk about the grade one being top notch in the Tingle Creek. I think it's fair to say this is a grade one isn't. I think it's at the mercy of Lawler. And hopefully the way it's shaping up, you mentioned Mengli Khan and you've mentioned Kalashnikov. The arc is shaping up really nicely. And what's nice about it is it's not Henderson and Nichols. It's, mm. it's a bit different, which is good for the sport. And that's what's one of the best things from an ITV point of view. This jump racing is so popular at the moment. And they're loving the fact that different stables are winning different races over here. While in Ireland, it's all Mull uh, Mullins and Elliott. So for Kelly Woolacott, this is really putting her on the map, Lawler, and I hope he absolutely bolts up tomorrow. And at Aintree, we've got the Beecher Chase over the National Fences, which is always great to see. Yeah. And also possibly a return for One for Arthur. Yeah, he's back in the many clouds, which is great. One for Arthur will have a special place in my heart because he won my first ever Grand National presenting on ITV, which is the biggest thing I've ever done in sport. When you think that Man United at Liverpool was always the biggest game I presented in the Premier League. Three million viewers, sometimes a bit less than that. Grand Nationals, eight, nine, ten million people watching. So it shows the enormity of that race. And he won it. I tipped him in the Daily Telegraph. And the two golf widows were just fabulous afterwards. So one for Arthur is one of my favourite horses ever, whatever happens. So great to see him back. You know, you wouldn't probably expect him to win tomorrow. Four-runner race, definitely Red and Co. But hopefully he'll, we'll see a bit of spark in the old boy. And then it'll put him on track to try and re regain his crown back in back in April at Aintree. So you want to see a bit of spark from him and then over the Grand National fences, Don Polly, one of my all time favourites as well. Again, you know, he's had his problems, um, but just great to see him back. And you've always thought the Grand National fences might suit him. But Black Lion was so impressive 12 months ago. Mm. So impressive that I think he's going to take a lot of beating. And you just had a little word there on viewers on ITV. How have you seen crowds grown over the last couple of years, let's say, or even stretching back a further five years? How have you seen crowd, uh, crowds grown, particularly in small runner fields? Has it got better for you? In terms of viewers? Viewers and here at the race course. Yeah, I can only speak really in terms of viewers. You'd have to get numbers uh, from the race courses, but the, the numbers of National Hunt meetings are fantastic. Next week in Sheldon, we're in another huge number. They had record crowds at the November meeting there, which tells you everything. ITV's viewers are just through the roof at the moment for jump racing. We had 977,000 people watching a very average Ladbrokes Trophy at Newbury last weekend. 
and that is up uh, almost half that two years ago and last year I think we were 820 so that just shows you how it's on the increase and so popular and from my, my point of view ITV4 is no longer even a talked about factor anymore because people are watching it and loving the jump racing watching in huge numbers which is fantastic and long may that last and just finally Ed a horse over hurdles and a horse over jumps <laughs> to follow for the season with so many big meetings coming up right my horse over hurdles. I'm gonna stick with the horse I started the start of the season no confidence has taken a bit of a knock because Boo Dare was so awesome in the fighting fifth last weekend but Lorena at Willie Mullins I know she's very good whether she's good enough to beat Boo Dare, I mean who knows we might see her next weekend at Cheltenham which would be great but Lorena I think is very very good uh, over obstacles, crikey, there are so many. Uh, I do think Lawler is very good in terms of novices, so hopefully Lawler will win uh, the novice chase at Sandown and then set up that big clash in the Arkle down the track. And I think, as much as I love Native River, and I think he'll take a lot of beating when he goes to regain his crown, I just think that presenting Percy, who we might see this weekend in the John Durkin, is absolutely tailor-made for a gold cup. So I'm going to be with uh, presenting Percy for that, and then Santini, in the RSA, there's there's your Yankee, <laughs> Chuck Santini, because Santini, when you speak to Nicky Henderson, you can just tell he thinks this horse is special and could be a Gold Cup horse down the track. So they're my four for you. Hey, thanks so much for your time. Pleasure.